Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Isabel Reynolds. I'm the president of the FCCJ. I'm very delighted today to welcome um, Mr. Yamashita. Um, he's the president of the Jap Jap Japanese Olympic Committee. Um, also, in his own right, a great star of the judo world uh, with a, an Olympic gold medal to his name, and also a former coach to the Japanese Olympic judo team. Um, I won't make this um, uh, introduction very long, but obviously he's um, at the very center of one of the biggest news stories that we're covering at the moment, so we're very keen to hear his opinions um, about the Olympics. Um, he'll be speaking for about 10 minutes. Um, we also have on this occasion, luckily, um, simultaneous interpretation, so that will give us more time, and we'll devote the rest of our time to questions. So with that, any more ado, uh, Mr. Yamashita. As introduced, my name is Yamashita, president of the Japanese Olympic Committee. And please forgive me for speaking in Japanese here. Also, in regard to FCCJ, I would like to express my joy for the invitation here today. First of all, in regard to the Tokyo 2020 event, I would like to say a few words. And then, in regard to the vaccination, and furthermore, last Friday, the, I have been re-elected as the president of JOC, and so I would like to talk about those three points. After that, uh, we would like to have a Q&A session. That's the schedule that I envision for today. I would like to request for your best regards. First of all, in regard to the 2020 Tokyo event, on September of 2013, at Buenos Aires in Argentina, at that time, President Jack Roge of IOC declared Tokyo, and it was decided that Tokyo would host the event. Nearly eight years have passed since that, and uh, the organizing committees have worked together with uh, the Tokyo government as well as the Japanese government and the sports organizations. We have prepared for this event by coordinating our efforts and from uh, President Buck of IOC, many times it has been mentioned that the preparation for Tokyo 2020 is of such a wonderful uh, nature uh, that is unprecedented. And in Rosanne, furthermore, uh, it was mentioned that because preparations have moved forward uh, so finely, uh, there has never been any event that has been so well prepared for the Olympic Games as Tokyo. However, in March of last year, it was decided that the event would be postponed for one year. And uh, many things which we could not have uh, imagined had to be overcome in order to come to the present circumstances. <coughs> Last year, in March, uh, the decision to postpone the Olympic event was made, and in April, uh, there was the declaration of the state of emergency. Under those circumstances, I had to think about the significance of sports and how the Olympics should be like. I once again had the opportunity to think, to think about this. Under those circumstances, the Japanese athletes had been carrying out training and daily lives that would have been considered normal in the past. But in regard to their training or their daily lives, things have been tremendously limited during the pandemic. And athletes have been forced to consider whether it was right for them to continue with sports or whether under these circumstances sports is something that is actually necessary or not. I am sure that there are quite a few athletes that had to ask themselves these questions. 
And in the various events, uh, the, the candidate athletes have been uh, decided to a great extent. And for each of the events, for those athletes that have been uh, selected to represent Japan, I hope that they have been able to overcome all these difficulties up until now. And with Japan as the host nation, we hope that they will be able to challenge their dreams boldly and actively. And uh, will be able to feel the happiness of uh, participating in the Olympics in what may be a once-in-a-lifetime experience for them. The mass media of Japan uh, has talked about pressure because uh, Japan is the host nation. Uh, they say that it's obvious and there are quite a few people in the mass media who like to apply pressure. But it's not necessary to feel that pressure at all. It's necessary to bold, to be bold, to, un to believe in yourself and to believe in what you have done so that you're able to challenge your dreams. Uh, during the remaining days, uh, JLC wants to create an environment that will allow the athletes to feel that way. And in regard to the Olympic event, for the participating athletes from each of the countries, uh, their activities will be very restricted. Compared to the previous Olympic events, their conduct will be re restricted. And so therefore, for the athletes to be able to get in the right condition will be a difficult thing. Under those circumstances, we will be holding this event, but for the Japanese athletes, I hope that they will actively follow the guidelines in the playbook, and I hope that they will keep this in mind. It's not just a matter of being stronger or being faster or uh, being excellent. That's not the only thing that is important. It's necessary for them uh, to represent Japan with uh, a sense of awareness and pride. That is a point that, as the president of the Japanese Olympic Committee, I would like to request the Japanese athletes to bear in mind. As it will not be possible to welcome spectators from abroad. I hope that the Japanese people will not just support Japanese athletes, but uh, uh, applaud and support the athletes from throughout the world. Uh, uh, we are still far from closure of the pandemic. And the vaccination has not been uh, going forward as anticipated, and many people are in a very difficult situation. And in Tokyo, we will have athletes from throughout the world gathered. And in regard to the activities of the athletes, I hope that they will be able to provide a very bright news for their countries and provide a light of hope for their countries. So I hope that the athletes will do their best. And as already mentioned, I myself have been an athlete as well as a manager and I have participated in the Olympic events uh, many times. From those experiences, I would like to mention that your opponent is not a foe or enemy, but rather a rival that is striving to achieve the same goals. That is why you are able to understand your opponents and respect each other. Uh, you are rivals that are striving to achieve the same heights. And so therefore, it's possible for them to understand each other and to recognize each other. This is something that I have always felt as both an athlete and as a manager. And you can feel, keenly feel that most strongly in the Olympic and Paralympic events.
In the opening ceremony of the 23rd of July, we are less than one month away. And we will continue to uh, focus upon preventing the spread of infections. And we will continue to be uh, very aware up until the end, and work with the uh, relevant organization so that we'll be able to safely, securely, and uh, very uh, much flexibly respond to different situations. Now, let me talk about vaccination. From IOC to each of the NOCs and the event staff members, uh, vaccination has been provided free of charge. And in each of the countries and regions, the athlete and so forth, who are scheduled to come to Japan, are being provided with vaccination. And the IOC, in our discussions with them, has announced that they are also 84% of the delegates of athletes from different countries have begun their vaccinations already. This is something which Mr. Bach has announced or reported to us. The IOC, in regards to holding the Games in Japan, is conducting its plans so as not to cause any difficulties for the Japanese people through the hosting, we understand. Although the vaccination is not compulsory, many of those involved in the Games will be vaccinated and this will contribute to the operations of a safe and secure Games. I personally also believe this to be the case. For the Japanese national team, from June the First, the vaccinations or inoculations has begun. And approximately 1,600 people connected to the team will be vaccinated through this program. This includes also the athletes or the candidates, also directors and coaches, the support staff, training partners, those other people who are also in regular contact with the athletes as well are also part of this program. I personally on June the 2nd had my first vaccination as part of this members. And this week I personally will be having my second dose as well. The Japanese national team and those affiliated with the team, approximately 95% of them and those involved will or have announced that they are intending to undergo the vaccination. Initially, as those working as health, uh, medical or healthcare professionals and athletes to be the first priority to be vaccinated in regards to that. There were some Japanese athletes who were somewhat hesitant about taking up their vaccine as those in priority categories were also going forward still. However, the vaccines which are being given to the athletes were provided by the IOC as a separate batch. The National Training Center staff and also the different team doctors of the different teams and so on are the ones which are carrying out the vaccinations. So this is not putting any burden or initial work onto the regular healthcare system within Japan as well. Of course, vaccination is something which protects not only the individual concern, but also the broader society, those around as well. So with this understanding, the athletes are able to now feel at ease about taking up their vaccinations also. The Japanese government and the national federations, thanks to their cooperation and many other stakeholders, Within just a few weeks of the IOC's announcement, a very short period, the vaccination of athletes could already be begun. So once again, I would like to thank the many people who understood the, the purpose of this initiative and were involved and in these efforts for the, prepar uh, the vaccinations. Thank you very much. Finally, I would also like to announce in regards to my re-election as the president of the GOC, JOC. On Friday last week, June the 25th, the Japan Olympic, uh, both its council and board uh, had their regular meetings and I was once again uh, elected to continue in my position for the next term. And from today, we have the, the new structure of the JOC as we go forward.
In Japan, looking at the governance code of the different sports uh, federations and industries and so on, each different sports association, organization, until now has been looking at how to ensure diversity. And this is something we are really calling on them. Looking at, for example, uh, how to ensure that this is within the different uh, formations and so on. So the female board members of the JOC are now more than 40 percent and external board members 25 percent. These were the targets which were set by the JOC and thanks to last Friday's uh, reappointments, re uh, this has now been achieved. As well as looking at the board for the organizing committee as well, looking at gender balance and also ensuring diversity within the membership, how this can contribute to a society of tolerance. We hope that this can be of coexistence. This is a legacy that we hope to leave from the Tokyo Games. But this is, of course, not an issue only for the sports world. This is a challenge for the broader Japanese society as well. Those sports-related associations, the also different uh, groups and so on involved. We look forward to having further coordination, collaboration to look at the gender balance and ensuring our diversity and realizing an inclusive society or a society with coexistence is something that we hope to continue to work toward together. From this also, under the COVID situation, Japanese society at the moment, whether sport is indeed really something necessary or not, that's something which has been questioned. In Europe or the US, for example, there is the case of looking at protecting your body and your health is your own responsibility and recognizing the importance of sport has become even more prominent within that context under COVID as different cities and countries have gone under lockdowns. Individual sports and exercise and so on has been something that said should not be restricted. Rather, in order to maintain individual health, this is something which many countries have been promoting even under lockdowns and so on. From now also, the different sports affiliated organizations, associations, and also the different uh, central uh, sporting commissions and so on, looking at how we can co coordinate together with them to increase the value and the recognition of that value of sports within society, to reaffirm that and to show how sport is something necessary for people's rich lifestyles as well. We hope to continue to raise this awareness and see this as our responsibility. Of course, this is not something which only the JOC can achieve. In addition, one last point I would like to make is looking towards the Tokyo 2020, well, since the decision of hosting, this is something where the national government, the sponsors, and the different uh, stakeholders have been supporting even more than before the success and the efforts of the Japanese athletes. This support for the sports world we hope is something which can be made visible within Japanese society even more as we go forward. And I think under the new structures or the new stage of the JOC towards uh, Tokyo 2020 and immediately after, I hope that we can immediately work to ensure that that is realized as well. That was a little bit long, but I will close my opening remarks here. Thank you very much. To move on to the question and answer session, um, I'd like to first of all remind everyone to switch off the sound on their phones if it happens to be on. Um, could you keep your questions short? Please don't make any speeches. And we have quite a number of people here, um, so it will be one question per person, please. Um, I'm going to start off with a question from me. Um, <coughs> Mr. Yamashita, you spoke at length about the Olympic dream and the ideals of the Olympics. Um, th th this year's Olympics is going to be very different from those in the past. Um, and a lot of Japanese people do remain concerned about the safety aspects. Um, and I think some of them even may feel that they're being forced to hold the Olympics against their will. Are you concerned at all that holding the Olympics in these circumstances could damage that, the whole image of the Olympic movement that's been such a big part of your, your own life? As was mentioned now, this will be a different games in Tokyo 2020 in a very different way than has been held in the past. First of all, 
the games will be much more simplified. And another point, and this is something for those participating and the athletes, not only the athletes and those participating directly in the games, but the citizens of Tokyo and of Japan overall, for them to be able to have their safety and security ensured. This is, you know, the precondition for the games to go ahead. So from now as well, as conditions continue to change, we will be flexible in our response and approach to this. This is what will be needed. After the postponement of the Games for one year, initially we had imagined using the same venues one year later for the Athletes Village and the, the venues and so on. But looking at the significant or the very high costs, additional costs to be used in that. So there were various efforts made in order to reduce these costs as much as possible. From around September last year, we started the very concrete methods towards how to ensure safety and security of the games for all people involved. From there, this, these preparations have been underway throughout this period. So for the Japanese people, and where they have very strong concerns, the first thing I would like to convey is that looking at the need to convey sufficient information to the Japanese people, this is something which perhaps has not been achieved until now, and I think we need to recognize this. At uh, the same time, within this year, looking at the different world championships, world cups, and so on, the different, there are around 450 different such matches, such competitions, which have been held around the world, and not a single one of these has led to any COVID cluster. If we look at, for example, towards the uh, different IFs who are coming forward towards the Olympics and so on, are saying that well, we are. To such an extent, we have this kind of experience in implementing these competitions and so on. So we hope to put this towards the management the operations in Tokyo as well. So we are hearing these different uh, suggestions or contributions from different federations around the world as well. In order to come to a closure of COVID, the vaccination issue is also extremely important. And I think this is something recognized by many people. As I just mentioned, also, those who are coming to Japan in connection with the games, at the very least, the athletes' delegations and those affiliated with them at the moment, 84% have been vaccinated. Those coming from Japan as part of the, to Japan, sorry, as part of the international media, I also understand have very high vaccination rates as well. However, of course, this is something which uh, not only, well, even if there is no spectators coming from overseas, what will we be doing about Japanese spectators, for example? For those competitions which are being held in the evenings, will people be held in? People will, you know, want to be able to celebrate after seeing the great efforts of the Japanese athletes. What do we do about these kind of circumstances? So we need to still do many things to ensure that we can create a safe and secure environment. There are many different uh, tasks still to be carried out. Within our different preparations towards the Games, I think the legacy that will be left as the circumstances have changed has also significantly been altered. However, within the current COVID-19 situation, as the world is greatly polarized, divided, people might see, well, if we're okay, then that's all that matters. Only our country matters, only our organization matters. This kind of perspective is something which, well, we've seen these kind of obstacles or trends appearing in different parts of the world. And when we consider the COVID situation, for athletes from around the world to gather together with various different coming over, different national borders, religions, races, overcoming these kinds of differences to gather together, the Olympics to be held, and for people from athletes from all over the world to do their best is something which I think for those many people who are suffering under COVID at the moment, as I mentioned, to have a sense of hope or to be able to give some light within their difficult circumstances at the moment. I truly believe that this is what the Olympics can provide. Therefore, to the very end, we will be making all efforts to ensure a safe and secure holding of the Olympic Games. I hope that's a good response. Thank you. My name is Shimura of Radio France. 
、uh, President Yamashita has talked about safety and security as being、uh, the assumption. But to hold a safe and secure event, are there any standards that can be applied? Does that mean that、uh, there will be no one、uh, who is、uh, positive?、Uh, does it mean that、uh, no, no deaths occur? For example,、uh, when the athletes from Uganda came,、uh, there were people who were in close contact with them. And so,、uh, in regard to safety and security, can we really call it a safe and secure event even after an incident like that? Thank you very much. At the organizing committee, we don't have definitions for this, but. But we must try to prevent infections from spreading. That's an important point. As for the、uh, Uganda athletes and those that tested positive, I regret that very much. Each of them had gone through two vaccinations. But we need two weeks after the vaccination for it to be effective. Antibodies do not, do not appear until then. And even if you have the antibodies, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can be adequately、uh, be protected from the coronavirus. We are aware of this. And so, therefore, in regard to the athletes from Uganda, Uh, we have already changed our response as a result of this. And in the border, solid checks will be carried out so that when they enter the country and we confirm a positive result,、well, we will change the response. And as you know, the people involved with the event every day are going through PCR tests. And by thoroughly carrying this out, when overseas athlete teams come,、uh, we don't believe that the risks are high that they will be infected here. But there's the issue of what to do about the spectators and also how they move around. And also, what about food and beverages after the event is over? Uh, we'll have to look at taking care of those situations. And this is not the role of the JOC, but rather the organizing committee. And so we will have to be、uh, in solid cooperation with them, and we would like to coordinate our efforts with them as we move forward. Good afternoon. My name is Hagiwara of Bloomberg. Looking towards the legacy of the Olympics and ensuring that there is a fair hosting for everybody as well. But I'd like to ask a step before about the fairness of the actual games themselves, particularly for the athletes this time as well. Within, there are, for example, some who their test matches have been cancelled, some who are only able to enter Japan very. Uh, immediately before the games, as well. Those coming from India or some other particular locations, as well, need to have particular quarantine measures in place. Or the Japanese badminton team, for example, not being able to enter the athletes' village but、uh, staying, or they have requested that they would like to stay in a different place, as well. So, looking at the different environment in Japan and for the different athletes, as well, will be very different depending. After one、uh, postponement、uh, for the year, as well, there are also some countries, for example, which perhaps have. Not had many opportunities for training, who will not be able to enter Japan for the games within different、uh, entry regulations. Their families or supporters may not be able to enter Japan as well. And when they hear the spectators, of course, only being from Japan as well, we'd like to ask within these k i n d of circumstances, Mr. Yamashita, how do you see that these Olympics can be a fair games for all athletes? In addition to that as well, what kind of challenges do you see to that regard? Thank you for this question. These 
Games as they have been postponed for one year. This is something not only for Japan, but all countries around the world have this dream. Well, there are many athletes in Japan and in all countries whose dreams of appearing in the Olympics perhaps were impacted due to this. There are some also whose chances have become less as a result of this in regards to training environments. In some who need to be quarantined in particular places and are able to concentrate on their trainings. However, some who do not have such opportunities, some who have trainings together with other countries, and some that are not able to participate in these kind of international trainings and so on as well. There are various different ways where these gaps are emerging between athletes from different countries. That is the reality. Five days before the Olympic start, there are some athletes who will be entering five days before and leaving within five days after their competition as well. For those athletes who are coming from overseas, I think that these are very tight regulations, very difficult circumstances for them. But within the different restrictions that will be in place for each different National Olympic Commission, the different federations, IFs, and also the IOC members themselves, together looking at, first of all, how to ensure to not uh, well, these kind of restrictions have been put in place to ensure not to cause any difficulties to the Japanese people. This is something which they've repeatedly called for understanding. Of course, we imagine that there would be a backlash against this from the different countries. However, this was completely not the case. I was very surprised by this. The National Olympic Commissions of each country, the different international sports federations, and the IOC itself also well, it was very first the IOC, well, the IOC family, really, which was the very first to say that, well, of course, there are some who were looking at how to ensure in each of these meetings and consultations, there was no opposition at all to these kind of restrictions, even within this situation. And seeing this, I really felt that very strongly. Whatever happens, we want to ensure a safe and secure Olympics can be guaranteed and to hold them in Japan. This hope from people all around the world was shared very strongly and particularly from the many NOCs who are of course looking after the athletes from all of the countries. This was their strong request, their strong hope. And in order to this, even if there are restrictions which almost seem impossible in some ways to take them on board, to accept them, I really felt that that was the very strong uh, will from each country. So there are, of course, different gaps, different differences which could be considered as unfair. However, even in such a situation, to hold the Olympics to go ahead, to have a place for athletes from around the world to gather together was the highest well, particularly for the Olympics, but particularly for the athletes and those people who are guiding the athletes, this was their strong uh, will. For countries such as India or some other countries with particular restrictions, the extra three days of quarantine, for example, without having these kind of uh, things in place, it will be very difficult to have the understanding of the Japanese people. However, I understand that these three days will not be, they will not be in a situation where they cannot conduct any kind of training. They will be under very controlled circumstances, perhaps with some restrictions, but still try to enable those athletes to be able to have an environment where they can work towards their best performance, even during that quarantine period as well. For the Japanese people as well, I think they are extremely have had to you know, be restrained, to be very concerned as they're looking at the vaccination situation and so on. Many difficulties held by the Japanese people as well. But for both the Japanese people and the international athletes as well, this is something which, well, really restrictions which would be very difficult to imagine under normal circumstances, but they are willing to be following these and working towards aiming for these Olympics as well. So I hope that people will understand these circumstances. And the form of the games itself is something which, looking at the different COVID contagion situation, may change even from now as well. But no matter what happens, we will have the safe and secure games as the precondition for this and be flexible in our measures towards that. Thank you very much. Uh, Robin. <coughs> Robin Harding from the Financial Times. 
Um, the meaning of these games, it was originally talked about as a, a reconstruction Olympics. Um, there were sort of meanings of Japanese revival, the memories of 1964. Uh, these Olympics have various meanings attached to them. What would you say is the meaning of these Olympics now with no foreign, cust um, no foreign fans, uh, limited numbers in the stadiums, tight restrictions on COVID? What are these games for and what are we going to remember about them? Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. I personally feel that under the uh, circumstances of the pandemic, before we had this pandemic, I felt that the legacy of the event that is most valuable is m many people from throughout the world would come to Japan and, and be in contact with Japanese culture and have a better understanding of what Japan is about. I had thought that this was a fine opportunity for Japan in that sense. Another thing, on the contrary, by having many people from throughout the world come to Japan, I hope that the people of this island country, Japan, would be able to have a better view of the world and to look at more diverse societies. We must not just face inwards. We belong as a member of the world. And so it's necessary for us to shift our focus to the rest of the world and have more interest towards global matters. That was the expectation which I had the most. But there were many such expectations which I had, but because of the pandemic situation, Uh, through our preparations towards the event in regard to what legacy there are many things that were lost it is a fact that many things had to be lo forgotten but however to change the subject slightly with the postponement of the event for one year uh, there was the feeling that the Olympics were becoming gigantic. Uh, they were extravagant national affairs. But I believe that we have been provided with an opportunity to relook at what the Olympics are about. I believe that is what the significance of Tokyo 2020 is about. As an athlete and since then, I have constantly been involved with the Olympics. And in the future, for the Olympics to survive, uh, instead of having national extravagant affairs that are costly, I believe that that's something that must change from here onwards. And I hope that the current event will provide a turning point for this to take place. This extravagance, uh, uh, whether you win or lose, of course, those matters are important, but people of different countries gather together in a single athletic village and overcome various difficult differences so that they can understand each other. That spirit, that Olympic spirit should spread broadly throughout the world. And I believe that that is a valuable thing. Uh, uh, it's not a matter of whether you are at the very top of the world in the event. But if we go back to the roots of the Olympic spirit, uh, under the same rules, in the same place, it's necessary to increase mutual understanding and to be able to establish friendships. That is what leads to world peace. And it's not just a matter that uh, happens within the athlete village. I believe that uh, that spirit is something that, as the president of JOC, I want to spread widely throughout Japan, first of all. And your uh, opponent is not an enemy. 
the most important thing in sports is the respect for your opponent. And that is something that we must continue to value highly. And through my experiences up until now, it's not just in Japan, but throughout the world, by watching their nations, uh, athletes, uh, actively participate, many people are going to be encouraged. And I hope that the world's athletes will be able to show their best performance so that in their respective countries uh, they will be able to offer encouragement. As for the vaccination, as we've proceeded within the athlete village, because of a positive result, there are no, we hope that there are no athletes or teams that have to uh, leave the event. I hope that there will be as much interaction as possible, friendships and mutual understanding should deepen through this event. That is what I truly wish for. Was that an adequate answer? Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Good morning, President Yamashita. I am from the Indonesian media. My name is Susilo. I have a simple question. Within the playbook, as has been written, if people want to go to the convenience store, they are allowed. What do you think about this rule? I think that, well, if within Japanese people overall, rather than the Japanese athletes, I think the Japanese people are perhaps considering more about the international athletes when it comes to these games. It's a very, you know, coming here in very restricted circumstances until now, you know, even if we say the athletes' village is rather wide space, it is, you know, quite, you know, difficult to be staying just within those circumstances. When I think back to my experience as an athlete as well, going to, you know, going to the town outside the athlete village, speaking with your, your coach outside as well to be able to refresh yourself, to be able to have that kind of experience as well when I look back. So I think the fact that the athletes will not be able to go outside the athlete's village, you know, to buy gifts for people at home to experience Japanese culture or Japanese food, there will be very severe restrictions in place on them. So how we look at how the international athletes can at least a little bit have an opportunity to relax, to feel, to have a time that they can feel released and also to create fun memories within, you know, not only the difficult or restrictive memories, but to have some positive memories from these games as well and to be able to perform in, in their competition at their best uh, position as well, to be able to come and say, well, even though it was very difficult circumstances, I'm very glad that I came and participated in the games. Of course, safe and secure is the precondition of this, but I think we need to make our efforts to ensure that the athletes can at least have that kind of space. I don't know about the very detailed aspects, such as, you know, specifically going to the convenience store and so on, but I think within an extremely restricted, limited environment, the athletes will be living and spending their time here in Japan. So I think that this is something that we need to understand and not look at this as something which is, you know, the, the strong will or just the selfishness of the athletes themselves, but look at how we can create an environment that they can uh, perform best and feel best as well. I hope that is a sufficient response. Uh, one from Xinhua New Zealand say, I am Mr. President, uh, before the postment of the Olympic Games that uh, um, it is reported that the Japan, the Japanese athletes uh, expect uh, to win 30 gold medals at these games. And uh, now, after this uh, difficult year, do you still think that uh, the Japanese student, uh, uh, athletes can still win uh, these gold medals? And uh, do you still think that this is important for them to win um, 30 gold medals or more? Thank you very much.
That's a wonderful question. Thank you. When it comes to the Japanese athletes, the goal of 30 medals, the person who was res responsible for the athletes when this uh, goal was decided was myself. There was an assumption for this. That was in 2017 and 2018 onwards, we looked at the Japanese who were potential athletes. And the idea was that they should be able to prepare as adequately as possible and be able to participate after going through such preparations. And we tried to look at what kind of outcome in terms of the number of medals can be expected. This was looked at in considerable detail. And with uh, each of the organizations, confirmations were carried out. And we spent about eight months accumulating numbers, and we set a high goal of 30 medals, which we felt was achievable. And so this became a goal of JOC. However, the preconditions have changed dramatically for the Japanese athletes. It was, this is not an event where adequate preparations was possible. And there's a lack of experience of athletes in international events. And this is a matter of great insecurity for athletes. Another point, when it comes to the rivals, the international athletes, to what extent are they able to prepare and under what circumstances are they in? It's almost impossible to understand what the picture is like. And the events have been restricted. There has been uh, no interaction between athletes. And so the preconditions have changed completely. So to seek 30 medals is something that I question the value of. From the Japanese mass media, uh, it could be increased or decreased, or maybe the goal should be readjusted. That has been pointed out by the mass media, but we don't have the time to do that. And even if we do this, uh, we don't know what the situation of the uh, overseas athletes are like. There are many other things that must be done instead. So in regard to whether it's important to achieve 30 medals, I would have to answer clearly no. Over the past year, under the pandemic, after the postponement of the event, uh, the people involved as the team uh, leaders and so on in JOC agree that it's not the number of medals, but rather how well prepared our athletes can be and how uh, better circumstances can be achieved to participate in the Olympics. And we want to have each athlete be able to do their best and do their utmost. Uh, the common understanding among all of the JOC members is that that is the thing that we must achieve. Uh, to say it in a different way, as the president of JOC, the athletes should ch chase their dreams, believe themselves and believe their companions, and uh, do their best to challenge the event. If they are able to do that, that's fine. If they're able to actively participate in that manner, that's sufficient. And that applies not just for Japan, but because this is a global pandemic, I hope that this is a tough situation for all of the world's athletes, but I hope that they will be able to do their best to achieve their best performance. After the postponement, uh, the uh, goal of 30 medals is being uh, is uh, kept on the sidelines. And no one is discussing about that within JLC about this. Is that a sufficient answer? OK, uh, lady in the front here, please. <coughs> I am from Shanghai Television. My name is So. Uh, congratulations on your re-election next, oh, sorry, last Friday. 
I, did you speak with Governor Tokyo since this decision? And also in regard, have you spoken also with Mr. Mori, the former uh, uh, chair, and what did you speak about with him? Uh, I'm very sorry, but last Friday, when I was reappointed to my post heading the JOC, and whether I have been in communication with Governor Koike, no, I have not. And I have also not been in touch at all with Mr. Modi either. I think that, well, probably they're aware of, of the re-election, but as you are aware, in regards to Governor Koike, uh, due to overwork, she is actually not well at the moment. So rather than my reappointment, I hope that she can be focusing on her recovery as soon as possible to come back with a smile to her duties and to overcome the many different challenges that are still waiting ahead. And so I hope to be seeing her, you know, healthy self uh, back soon, and that will be something to provide this sense of security to everybody, I believe. And in regards to Mr. Mori, looking towards Tokyo 2020, and since the very beginning, he put many efforts you know, towards the success of these games. So I think the holding of the games in a safe and secure manner for athletes from all around the world to be coming and perf uh, giving their best performance, looking at what we can do to ensure this, and I hope that he is looking on and will be uh, seeing this success as well. I don't have any plans of reaching out or being in contact with either of them. I, I will make any reports if they do become necessary, but this is really a new start with new members within the 30 members, 17 members have been newly appointed to the board of the JOC as well. So first of all, I'm looking at how to enhance the coordination within these new members as well. Thank you. Well, I'm Andrew McCurdy from AFP. Um, you said earlier that um, some of the Japanese athletes hesitated before they were vaccinated. And once it was explained to them that the vaccines wouldn't be coming from the same supply as would be given to elderly people in Japan, then they understood. But a lot of people in Japan maybe don't understand that, and maybe they do think that the athletes are jumping the queue. Do you think there's a risk that the Japanese athletes could become the focal point for a lot of people's anger uh, during the, the Olympics? Could they be like a lightning rod for, um, for criticism against the Olympics? When it comes to the Japanese athletes, well, in regard to the vaccination of uh, the candidates and the uh, athletes, about 95 percent have already received their first dose of the vaccine. 95 percent is a rather high number, as mentioned. At first, in regard to vaccination, there was criticism from uh, society and from mass media, and Japanese athletes were not very uh, anxious to get the vaccination. But when it comes to uh, the different organizations such as uh, judo or field and track and volleyball and soccer, the managers and the team doctors started to explain in detail to the athletes. And as a result, we have been able to achieve this level of 95% vaccination. A certain athlete that I know has not been vaccinated. This is because that athlete had vaccine in elementary school and had a tremendous allergy and went through hard times. And so therefore, it was decided after discussion with the coach that it would be better not to be vaccinated in that athlete's case. And when it comes to July, June, in the month of June, in various events, in soccer or volleyball or handball or baseball, uh, we're now deciding on the athletes to represent Japan. 
and there is concerns that maybe the vaccination uh, reaction uh, may uh, cause some problems for a person's physical condition so that they're not going to be able to represent Japan. And there are some athletes that want to refrain from vaccination because of that. But, but even so, uh, it's only about 5% of the total that feel that way. Frankly speaking, the athletes have looked at the criticism from the people of Japan or from the mass media, and they are very much concerned about being targeted. And 41 uh, years ago, in the Olympics, for the Russian Olympics, there was a friend of mine in uh, graduate school and, and there were many words of encouragement that came to me from friends like that. And uh, there was some criticism about the words that I said. There were many people who were losing their lives in Afghanistan. And without understanding that, uh, you are trying to selfishly pursue your goals and uh, stop in indulging yourself is the kind of letter that I received. And I, my hands were shaking as I read that. And I said to myself, Yasuhiro, as you go into training, it seems that uh, I was discouraged from the following day. And for two months and a half, I went through that. Uh, many of the athletes want uh, support from the people of their countries. And this acts as a source of strength for them. However, currently, uh, there may be questions as to whether it's correct to continue training or whether it's right to receive vaccination. And the fact that uh, athletes feel that way is something that as the president of JOC, I must uh, feel responsibility for this. I had not been able to fulfill my responsibilities. And it's not a uh, criticism that should be directed towards a limited number of people, but uh, that uh, criticism uh, should be directed towards the Japan Olympic Committee. We have been able to, we have not been able to fully protect athletes, and some athletes have uh, received messages criticizing them. But I would like to request that uh, you avoid criticizing the athletes in that manner. If you're going to criticize someone, uh, criticize JOC and the president of JOC, myself. For many athletes, Olympics uh, may be a once-in-a-lifetime event. And in 1984, for the Moscow Olympics, the athletes at that time, uh, many of them feel the impact of what happened because of the um, Moscow Games. In, and then there was the Los Angeles uh, Olympics where uh, people of the Eastern Bloc did not participate. And at that time, uh, we had been able to meet with them in uh, 2010, but there were many who still uh, had uh, the grievances. It was not their fault that they were not able to participate in Los Angeles. But this is something which I would like to ask for your understanding upon. Is that sufficient? It's two o'clock, but we, all, we do have a number of questions left over. I'm wondering, Yamashita-san, would you allow us to ask one more question? Okay. <laughs> okay, is there anyone in this area of the room? If not, I will go to the online questions. Right. Um, so from Eric Johnston of the Japan Times. Um, with the discovery that a second Ugandan athlete tested positive for COVID after arriving, uh, local governments serving as host towns for other delegations are now worried that COVID testing upon arrival in Japan is not sufficient and that as more international delegations arrive over the coming days, the risk of clusters in their own cities and towns, which do not have many resources to deal with large numbers of COVID patients, will increase. 
What is the JOC doing to deal with these concerns among leaders in host towns? The organizing, so this is a question about the JOC rather than the organizing committee of the games. So it's something which, well, directly it's the organizing committee which is responsible for the management of that issue. So I perhaps do not have a sufficient understanding of the issue, but First of all, in regards to the athletes, the fact that there was a positive uh, test within the athletes is something, of course, very unfortunate. And I'm sure that the Ugandan athletes themselves are very disappointed with their uh, current circumstances. Looking at that, also seeing that Japan, towards the Tokyo 2020 Games, many different villages, towns and cities throughout Japan have put their hands up to become host towns and people from wanting to show their hospitality and welcome people from around the world to have international exchange in this way. There are so many different places who put their hands up for this. However, many of these have unfortunately had to give up on being host towns. And so I think, you know, showing that, for example, they do not feel that they can have the full responsibility or deal with hosting international delegations and so on. Until now, the organizing committee of the Games in regards to after the arrival in Japan, the measures in place, it has been up to the measures of the local host town as well. But no matter what kind of, of measures are put in place, it's not possible to ensure that there will be not a single positive case arriving in Japan. If we take, for example, in early June, there was the World Judo Championships in Hungary. And at that time, as far as the information I have heard, there were three positive cases found upon entry into Hungary for those judo championships. So I think that the measures at the borders on the time of arrival is very important to ensure that there is no new positive cases arising during the duration of the games and to also ensure that the athletes after they return to Japan. I, I understand that in regards to the Hungary case as well, there was within the games, uh, there was no new cases and also upon returning to their home countries within a week as well. So I think that this is very important. We of course do not know the direct circumstances of the second Ugandan athlete, but perhaps it is due to being a close contact in regards to this. So to ensure that this is not only left up to the host towns themselves, but to look at, for example, having separate quarantine immediately upon arrival in Japan to have measures in place on the borders as well. And I understand that the organizing committee is working towards these at the moment. So even if you, of course, have had two vaccination doses, this does not guarantee that every individual will be negative for any type of vaccination. This cannot be completely guaranteed. But of course, there is a reduced possibility. But in order to ensure that no cluster arises, to make sure that there can be thorough measures at the border at the time of entry to Japan, and also through having PCR tests conducted every day is also something which can be done uh, to reduce as much as possible to make sure that we cannot or do not have any more positive cases. And so having very thorough measures in regards to this is something I believe is very important. I hope that this is a sufficient response. Right, I think that's uh, all we have time for. Thank you for offering us those five extra minutes. Um, as we always do at the end of one of these talks, um, We'd like to offer you a one-year free membership to the to the club, and we very much hope that you'll come and join us, perhaps in the bar sometime when the virus has died back a bit, and tell us about how this Olympic has has played out. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>